Hey kids, it's Best of Fly here, hope you're well. Out about today on the brand new for 2019 BMW R1250R. It's the uh, big naked boxer engine bike from BMW, now with the uh, shift cam equipped version of the boxer engine. Stick around, stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of it. So I've literally just jumped on the, uh, on the bike, ridden it uh, probably about half a mile, if that, and uh, it's amazing how quickly you can form some impressions of bikes, isn't it? Now I have to admit to you, I wasn't particularly looking forward to riding this bike, because uh, to me, it just looked a bit meh. I didn't really understand who the bike was for. Um, because, you know, if you want a bruising naked bike, there's all sorts of stuff on the market now, isn't there? You can get yourself a speed triple, uh, or if you want to go really hooligan, then you're into Super Duke R and MT-10 type territory, or a Prilia Tuono. I'm not sure if you wanted a naked bike why you'd go with a boxer engine machine. However, having, as I say, just jumped on the machine, I can say it's already surprised me. I've only been uh, just going around town here a little bit. I haven't really opened her up, but the engine feels really lively. So what I'm going to do is my uh, usual little local loop that I do when I'm uh, riding the bikes from Barnstormer. So thanks very much to those guys, by the way, for lending me the bike. Uh, I'm going to try and do a little bit of uh, fast road, see what she's like on the dual carriageway. A little bit of town work and a few twisties too. And uh, I'll show you around the bike and talk you through the spec as well. So stick around and stay tuned. This is my first impressions review of the 2019 R1250R. So just while I'm uh, in the traffic queue here, making my way to the faster road, a good chance to go through some of the practical aspects of the bike. Seating position first off, first thing that strikes you, very, very comfortable. This particular one is fitted with a sports seat. In fact, this particular bike is the uh, sports version. So it's the sort of top of the range bike, if you like. It's got everything thrown at it. I'll leave it to you to look through the uh, specs on the BMW website so you can see what comes as standard, because I don't want to risk getting that wrong. But this one is a highly spec bike. It's got the uh, Shift Assist Pro, so the up and down quick shifter fitted. Uh, it's got the uh, ESA, the, uh, which is the fancy suspension. Uh, it's got heated grips. It's got the TFT. The TFT, by the way, is standard, but those other things I mentioned are all optional extras or bits that you get when you buy the sports version of the bike. And there are various packages on the bike you can buy as well uh, to add some of the uh, extras that you'd, that you'd want. Anyway, back to uh, the seating position. So, very, very comfortable. The reason why I went down that tangent is because this has got the sports seat, which uh, I'm not sure if it's got different padding or what, but I have to say it's extremely comfortable. And it's uh, nice and low. I'm only five foot eight, uh, and I can get my foot flat on the floor on this bike, which I like. In terms of the position of your feet, arms, and backside, uh, I feel like I'm sitting very upright. I'm barely canted forward at all. It's not a sporty position. Handlebars are nice and wide. In fact, I'll go as far as saying they're possibly the same handlebars as are fitted on things like the GS. It doesn't feel an unfamiliar ride position. It might be a little bit narrower than the GS. But it is a comfy position, you could ride all day long on this, no problems at all. As I mentioned, it's got the amazing BMW TFT. I say amazing because I've been lucky enough to ride lots of bikes now with TFT screens. I'm not entirely sold on TFT as a concept, but I accept uh, that bikes are going that way. But if you're going to have a TFT screen, I have to say the BMW implementation is the best one I've seen yet. Uh, it's a big, big screen, it's nice and clear, easy to read, it does all sorts of clever stuff. I love the way it looks when you start the thing up, the little graphics it does. I love the fact that it does things like the red line moves as the bike warms up, stuff like that. It does absolutely everything, this TFT. It's got connectivity for your phone, it's got basic sat-nav, uh, the whole nine yards. It's also, when I mentioned sat-nav, you've got uh, the sat-nav preparation on this one. I haven't actually got the navigation unit fitted. If I were to buy one of these bikes, I'd definitely get that. They uh, work really well on BMWs. The way that they integrate them with the whiz wheel here is amazing. The whiz wheel also controls the TFT and you swap between the two. One of the other features this has on the R, actually, is the fact that you can change from the normal presentation of the TFT. If I hit the menu button, uh, and go down. I could change it. There we go. That's the sort of sport presentation. That's the same uh, TFT display you'd get if you were riding the, the sports bike, the S1000RR. So it has things like uh, lean angle. There you go. Look, I went to 14% there. Woo! Uh, and all sorts of other stuff on there. Traction control settings and what have you. So you can change that to suit your mood. Anyway, let's get on to this uh, bit of dual carriageway and let's just see what the bike's like on a faster road in terms of both that new 1250 shift cam engine and the weather protection. 
Right, just carry on to the dual carriage right now. But one thing I would say about the engine in particular is it's just very, very smooth on here now. I'm used to riding the uh, previous generation water-cooled 1200cc version of the engine, and this just feels so much more lively. The shift cam stuff, I'm sure you've heard all about it, but basically it's uh, BMW's version of uh, sort of variable valve timing. It has two sets of uh, cam profiles at something like 5,000 RPM. It opens up the inlet uh, valves more, gives you some more breathing space and just brings the bike alive and then at lower RPM it uh, goes to the other set of cam profiles and means that the bike rides much more smoothly at low speeds. And the beauty of it is you can't tell it doing it. It's really cleverly done what the boffins have done there. And the practical application of it is it just makes the Boxer engine feel much more lively than it ever has done before. Now I've ridden the shift cam uh, engine on things like the RT the, and the GS and it does feel good on there but I have to say on this bike the R it feels much more lively. I don't know if the tuning's slightly different on this bike but this is no doubt is the most lively feeling uh, Boxer engined BMW I've ever ridden. It'd be nice to get out of the way of this traffic if I could just to properly open her up. But I can already tell, even in top gear, cruising at 65, that this is a lively engine. Come on Ford, let's have you out of the way. I want to see what this puppy can do. Just while I'm waiting for the Fiesta driver to uh, sort of, I think it's herself out. Uh, a few more, oh, there we go. Right, so sixth, fifth gear, and by goodness me, when you wind it on, it absolutely flies. <laughs> Yeah, suddenly the R1250R has become an alive bike. When I rode the old 1200R version, it was a nice bike, but it was a little bit sort of meh, so what, you know, didn't sort of want to rip your arms off or anything, but this one absolutely does. This is up there with the likes of the Speed Triple as a proper man's bike. <laughs> if I could be sexist in that way. This thing really flies. Handling is beautifully light through this roundabout. I really like through there, lovely. One of the things I love about the Boxer engine is the fact that it carries its weight so low. So even though the headline figure for weight of this bike is quite high, it's something like 230 odd kilograms. It just doesn't feel anywhere near as heavy as that. In terms of wind protection, here I am doing 70 miles an hour, 72 miles an hour indicated on the motorway. It is a naked bike, so I am in the wind blast. Uh, got some good protection lower down. It's quite a wide frontal area of the bike. Legs are nice and protected. Shoulders and head though, getting all the wind blasts as you would expect from a naked bike. It's not dirty air though, it's not turbulent. It's perfectly easy to hold on at these uh, higher speeds on the faster roads. But you are in the wind blast of course, it is a naked bike so of course you'd expect that. If you had to do high miles on a motorway, no issue with this bike, it's got plenty of grunt to get you by traffic. And you could absolutely knock off the miles. It at any speed, it just rolls on in a most ridiculous manner. It, it, this is a fast bike. Love it, that. All right, that's enough of the high speed stuff. Let's come off and uh, try through town. See what she's like at slower speeds. Gearbox on here is lovely and smooth. This has got the quick shift assist pro fit, as I say, so up and down the box, nice and smooth, particularly for a uh, boxer engine bike. Previous implementations used to be a bit agricultural, but this now on the 1250 is lovely. Hello, sir, on the Ducati. Yeah, really nice through the corners, this. Got a nice sound about it as well. This has got a standard exhaust on it, which I'll show you when we do the walk around. A bit of a big, shiny chrome affair, but it's got a nice low grumble to it. Sounds quite different, again, to other boxer engine bikes that I've ridden. I don't know if they've paid attention to that or what, but it's got a sort of a low rumble about it that uh, sounds like it means business. So just try to decide to myself whether I prefer this presentation on the TFT or the standard one. Let me uh, head back to the standard one. There we go, there's the standard one. That gives you the speed in uh, digits and, uh, and the RPM is that graph. I think I might prefer that actually, a, bit, a little bit less going on on the screen. You do of course have a proper fuel gauge on the Beamers as well, which I like. Long overdue. I thought he was going to stop then. I'm pleased to say the ABS works an absolute treat. Brakes on here are amazing. We've actually fitted uh, Brembo calipers on the front of this bike, which again I'll show you when I do the walk around. 
Uh, and I say that in that surprise way because of course on some of the other 1250 engine bikes uh, BMW have now gone with the Hayes calipers, a US manufacturer, badge than BMW. So on the new GS 1250 for example you don't have Brembo's anymore. I don't have a problem either way having ridden both bikes these brakes are just fantastic. Just going to try the back brake. Actually the back brake is pretty good on here as well. For a big old twin this really does ride nice and smooth. When you're stopped on the bike there is a bit of vibration lets you know that you're on a boxer engine machine. But it's not obtrusive in any way, it's not horrible vibration. But once you get moving, everything smoothens out and it really is a nice smooth ride. And here I am doing 26. There's no issue with the fueling at all, there's no jerkiness. Up here I'm just coming into Marlow now, which is always a busy town. As I get down the high street, I'll be able to see what she's like in a little bit of traffic. While I'm stopped here, look, I can get my feet flat on the floor. Either side, I'm absolutely flat on the deck. I've got, I'm only a shorty, 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch leg. Uh, and on this sports seat, feet are flat on the deck. Bike doesn't feel ponderous at all, doesn't feel like you're in any danger of dropping her, I'm glad to say. If you do choose to use the clutch, which of course you can, it's lovely and light. Okay, so Marlow is typically busy. It's always busy here, popular little spot. Especially on a beautiful day like today when the sun's out. And for filtering, bike's fine. The steering feels a little bit slow at slow speeds, if that makes sense. A little bit heavier, you do have to, uh, you know, it takes a bit of effort to wind it round cars. But uh, certainly nothing untoward, filtering on here is no issue at all. And as I say, I'm not feeling any jerkiness in the throttle, which is nice. Used to be a complaint on the, some of these bikes that they were, the fueling was a bit odd. These days manufacturers have to run the bikes very lean to get them through Euro 4 regulations. They seem to have sussed out how to uh, make that work without making the bike ride horrible at slow speeds. Gosh, what an absolutely beautiful day. So the bike comes in various flavours. I mentioned before this is the Sport model, which is the top of the range one. And it's got the HP colour scheme on this, which I'll show you in a minute, which looks absolutely lovely. I'd probably go for the HP if I was getting one myself. I think it just looks great. They also do exclusive versions. They also do various packs uh, that you can get for the bike that gives you various arrays of optional extras. If you go for the base bike, which let's face it, no one's going to go for the base bike because that doesn't have things like the clever suspension, etc. Then uh, that's going to cost you around about twelve and a half thousand pounds. I think twelve thousand three hundred is the list price. Just waiting for this vehicle. Love this bridge. If you go for the top spec bike like this has, with everything that you're going to want on it, then you're looking closer to fourteen and a half. Gosh, I could actually feel the uh, the bridge moving as I was waiting there. That was a bit alarming. Oh, how beautiful does this look today? Here we are. The weir at Marlow and the River Thames. Beautiful. Oh, and the smell of cooking coming from the rather posh hotel on my left. I haven't had any breakfast yet. It's just reminded me of that fact. Alright, so we're out of town now. We can start to wind her on again. Yeah, nice feeling in the corners on this. Really easy bike to ride, although well, when you wind her up, as I saw on the dual carriageway, it can be a hooligan and it goes like stink. It's also very docile when you ride it, you know, at more sensible speeds like this. Handling is nice and neutral on these corners. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this actually. I, I had sort of low expectations, I must say, because as I mentioned when I previously rode the R, it just didn't do much for me. But this is now feeling a really refined ride. Well, we are in a golden age of motorcycles. We're so sport now, aren't we? I guess the question I'm asking in my mind is if I were to be in the market for a naked roadster, why would I go for this over something like, I don't know, a Super Duke or a Tuono? I suppose this is a bit larry, a bit less in your face than those bikes, and of course you get all the BMW electronics package, which is pretty, pretty special. And not to mention the amazing um, sat-nav integration and the TFT, which I prefer over things like the Aprilia and uh, KTM offering. It's sort of a sensible hooligan bike. Let's just have a, another quick blat up this little bit of dual carriage right here. And I'm going to take you to one of my favourite places in the world, what Waltham Airfield. We'll stop up and I'll show you around the bike. Lovely grip coming around the roundabout here. Very confidence inspiring. See that shift cam thing do its thing again? Absolutely flies when you want it to, it really does. Quickly up to silly speeds. 
Yeah, this really is a do-it-all bike. Sort of a Swiss Army knife for bikes, this one. I suppose to answer my earlier question, if you didn't want to go, you know, didn't want to follow the crowd, didn't want to go the GS route, you had no intention of going off-road, but you still wanted a BMW, this is certainly one to consider. So just while I'm uh, making my way up to the airfield uh, car park to show you around, just a chance to talk to you about the switch gear on here, which is the usual BMW affair. I call this PCB switch gear, I don't know what it's actually called. I call it that because basically it's uh, bits of plastic pressing on a printed circuit board below. And all that works and many bike manufacturers do that now. It doesn't feel great to me. You know, tactile feedback on this sort of switch gear is a bit rubbish to be honest. I can't imagine, if you had a premium car manufacturer, they pay attention, don't they, to the way that their switches feel when you use them in the car. Or so I understand, feel like Audi and Jaguar, they get the weighting right. It's a shame bike manufacturers don't do that as well. Because this stuff, well that works fine, it just feels a bit plasticky when you use it. It's the same as I've got on my bike, I have a BMW GS, uh, mine's uh, four or five years old now. Uh, and mine has similar switch gear. Uh, and one of the problems I have, particularly with the menu button, is that over time it gets a bit sticky and I have to put a bit of WD-40 in it occasionally, so I suspect this will go the same way in the long term. It's easy enough to use, it's uh, functional or logical, I'm just not a fan of that. It's not, uh, it's not just BMW that I would criticise for that. All the bike manufacturers do that these days, I guess it's for cost of manufacture. Mirrors on here, again these are the standard mirrors you see on lots of BMWs, but uh, no problem, they work absolutely fine, they're lovely and rock steady, good view out the side, I'm not looking at my uh, elbows or shoulder, really good uh, situational awareness out the mirror, so they work well. Well, not only is it a lovely day today for uh, riding a motorcycle, it's also a lovely day for flying. And uh, this is the local airfield that I fly from, White Waltham, EGLM as I know, Echo Golf Lima Mike, if you're that way inclined. Yeah, looking a little bit hazy visibility wise today but uh, yeah maybe i'll come flying tomorrow anyway i came here because i knew this car park was here i can park the bike up uh, and show you around her that'll do i'm not in anyone's way hopefully i can get the sun on off for a nice photograph or whatever easy to find neutral stand nice and easy to find this one's got keyless so you can turn it off by pressing that and off she goes all right then let's show you this bike here we go, the uh, R1250R, as I mentioned before, this is the HP paint scheme, so I think this is the better looking paint scheme actually, I quite like the way they do this sort of motorsport inspired blue and red, not so sure about the big R, but there we go, so you can tell what it is, um, and yeah, there she is, okay, so uh, let me get the uh, other camera out in the usual way, and I'll talk you through the spec. Okay, here we go then, the uh, BMW R1250R, all new for 2019. Uh, because of course it has got this new uh, engine in it with the shift cam technology you can tell it's the new one because it's got this slightly different uh, shape here and it says shift cam on it so in terms of spec then it's a 1254 cc uh, boxer engine now uh, putting out 136 horsepower at 7750 rpm so not as much horsepower as things like super duke r etc but uh, way more horsepower than any boxer engine before it and it certainly feels powerful 143 newton meters of torque at 6250 rpm and that's the thing about this motor it is very very talky so you've got loads of grunt at pretty much any part of the rev range to be honest with you it feels like a fast bike this it does not feel like a boxer engine uh, machine or not like any boxer engine machine that i've ever ridden before uh, in terms of the brakes let's have a look at them on the front i already mentioned that uh, it's got the brembo calipers on here as opposed to the haze ones that you see on other bmws i guess that's due to well i don't know some sort of contractual arrangements i guess but they work really really well they're gripping onto uh, two 320 mil discs um, and at the rear there's a uh, single 276 uh, mil disc let's just have a look at that and again with a proper Brembo uh, two pot caliper on there as well of course it's got ABS and traction control and this sport model with all the extras actually has uh, the lean angle sensitive ABS Pro uh, as well uh, seat height a standard 820 millimeters you can get a low seat so uh, which is 720 which I'm wondering whether this actually is and this honor oh this is the sport seat at 840 but I'm getting my feet down no problems at all on this uh, it's a really really easy bike to ride even for shorties and I'm really pleased that BMW offers such a wide range of seating options so that it doesn't matter if you're tall or short you'll find one that works for you 
Uh, the wet weight of this sounds heavy, 239 kilograms wet, um, which does sound heavy, but because I mentioned this before, because of that boxer engine, what I love about them is the fact that the weight is held very low. The centre of gravity is super low, so it feels nowhere near that weighty when you're riding it. Don't be put off by these bikes because of the high weight figure. They do not feel like heavy bikes when you're riding them, both in the handling and when you're at a standstill. Tank capacity on this, 18 litres usable. Uh, which I suppose is okay. Some of the other bikes of this type take 15 litres, so it's quite uh, quite a reasonable tank on here. Uh, electronics wise, well it's laden with electronics as standard. You get uh, two riding modes, rain and road. You get the TFT screen, heated grips, uh, power socket, hill start control, things like that. And then of course you could throw all the BMW extras at it if you want to. So this one has things like the, uh, the keyless ride. Uh, there we go, you can see that there. It's got the little SOS uh, button. Uh, which we've seen before on some of the other models. It's got this sat-nav preparation. Highly recommend the sat-navs on any BMWs because the integration with this whiz wheel is amazing. It's got cruise control on this one. Uh, it's got uh, Shift Assist Pro. Uh, it's, this one's got the semi-active suspension. Uh, we can see in here, look, it's got the little ESA, dynamic ESA bits and pieces in there. So there's basically all the electronics you could possibly want. Um, you can get uh, additional modes as well. Uh, ABS Pro, as I mentioned, tire pressure monitoring, all sorts of stuff, as well as loads of extras and different packs that you can buy. You can get uh, luggage for it, you can get a centre stand, you can get a billet pack, you can get a sports exhaust, uh, and it comes in various paint schemes. As I say, this is the HP one, but you can get an exclusive uh, scheme as well if you want to. Uh, in terms of pricing, uh, the BMW website says the standard bike is 11215 but take that with a massive pinch of salt. No one's going to buy the standard bike, everybody's going to want some of these extras. So you're probably looking for a bike of this spec, closer to £14,500. So, yeah, uh, quite an expensive bike, but you do get an awful lot for your money on this. Alrighty, that's enough uh, about the specs on the bike. Let's uh, ride us some more on this absolutely beautiful day. Okie dokie. Let's fire this up again then. Hit the old power button. Let's watch that LCD do its thing. I never tire of watching these uh, BMW start up. There we go. Slightly different graphics on this over some of the other bikes, but uh, nonetheless, still good to watch. Alrighty, uh, press the start button would help. And when you start this up, you'd still get that little bit of boxer rock and roll. It just gives you that little bit of torque reaction, which I quite like. Gives it a little bit of character, but uh, as I say, once you're moving, smooth as you like. So it's nowhere near like what the old boxers used to be in terms of uh, rock and roll and rumble. As soon as I'm moving off, even in first, it's really smooth and beautiful. What a lovely day. Well, I'm hoping this weather's going to persist because I'm going to be down here tomorrow again. But I should be swapping two wheels for two wings. Right, I'm just going to uh, take this down another little road that I know, just because I want to ride it some more because it's actually a really fun bike to ride this. Also, I want to see if I can get uh, decent background for a bit of a snappage as well see what I can find so I think all in all this is a this is an all-rounder isn't it it's uh, and it's a proper all-rounder I don't mean this is an all-rounder in a boring way that's often what people say and that's kind of what I expected I was going to say uh, when I knew I was going to ride this bike because that's kind of what I thought about the old R1200R but this one definitely isn't boring if you want it to be exciting it certainly is when you wind on the power but it's great just for riding in, you know, in traffic like this at sensible speeds. It'll do that all day long. You could tour on it, you could ride to work on it. It really is multi-talented. I guess I'm still struggling a little bit with uh, exactly who it's aimed at. Because if you did want a naked bike, I've mentioned those other machines you could get. But of course there's also the BMW S1000R, isn't there? They're a hooligan naked bike, which is actually a little bit cheaper than this to buy. I'm wondering why you'd buy this rather than that. I'm not sure I have an answer for that, other than maybe looks. Hopefully when the uh, new S1000Rs come on the demo fleet, I'll get a go on that as well, and I can uh, have a little think about that question once again. Must just take this opportunity, of course, to thank the guys up at Barnstormer, the BMW dealer for Maidenhead, who have lent me the bike for this review, and they lend me lots of bikes, so thanks to those guys once again. If you've not been up to the dealership there, and you're in the local area, well worth having a look lovely showroom as most BMW ones are, about all I think, and uh, not only is there loads of bikes to look at, but uh, often you can get free biscuits and a cup of coffee as well, so <laughs> it's worth popping in, and there's a loo, so uh, it's worth popping in, just as a bit of a possible ride out destination. Have a chat to Aldo and the guys, 
they'll sort you out on any demo box if you want to have a ride and this engine is so tractable I just pulled away there in third gear and it didn't complain at all from basically a standing start in third and it just grunted its way away that is one of the joys of the boxer prodigious amounts of torque this particular invitation absolutely flies as well when you need to do. It's got a lot going for it. The performance of this engine is amazing with the shift cam technology. It's a, it can be a hooligan bike. It's got prodigious grunt, as I say. Oh, I wonder where you get if you go down here. Let's have a look, see if there's a photograph spot. And it gives you that low centre of gravity, which makes the bike so easy and light to handle. It's just a shame it looks a bit rubbish, isn't it, the old boxer? But there we go love this time of year everything's looking fresh everything's starting to turn green spring flowers are out gives you great hope for the riding season ahead doesn't it I wonder if there's somewhere down here i could take a picture well this is a new one on me and it appears to be a dead end bother suspension on the bike is beautiful actually as i say it's got the fancy esa suspension on here it just soaks up the bumps really nicely so even on these sort of gnarly back lanes if you get a comfortable ride and you get a very confidence inspiring ride when you're pushing it as well on the faster roads I'm just going to have a snap here just for fun I'm not sure it's a great spot but we'll see bit of rock and roll again let's go Alrighty, so uh, there we have it. That's my first impressions review of the uh, 2019 BMW R1250R. Lovely bike. There's nothing about it I don't like, really. Uh, I can't find anything at all that I don't like about the bike, other than maybe the looks don't grab me particularly. But it certainly rides beautifully, and compared to the previous generation R1200R, it is a way better bike. Much more exciting, much more fun to ride. So if you're in the market for a R1200R or R1250R, get the new one because it is much much better oh look at that just in time for a white van to pull out in front of me brilliant alrighty I better get this bike back to its owners then although I think I've legged it with it I hope that's been of some interest to you and if this is the first time you've seen one of my reviews then thanks very much for watching It'd be great to have you subscribe I don't just uh, make videos about reviewing bikes but also do stuff in the garage about looking after bikes maintenance that sort of thing I do trips and tours I do kit reviews I do uh, bike news I do the odd live stream Basically, anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I'll try and cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. It'd be great to have you along once again. Thanks for watching. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.